I'm standing inside the Del Mar College ICNC boardroom on the Del Mar College East Campus. The Del Mar College Board of Regents are nine elected officials of the Del Mar College District who implement policies for the college. This governing board is responsible for helping to deliver dreams at Del Mar Now. I'm Amy Mintz, Associate Professor of Child Development Early Childhood at Del Mar College. One of the college's current Board of Regents was recently awarded the Outstanding Alumni Award. Sandra Messbarger is here to tell us how it feels to receive this prestigious honor. The new Dean of Student Outreach and Enrollment at Del Mar College is also here. Patricia Benavides Dominguez will explain what's available under her area and how to enroll at Del Mar College. A Del Mar Now update will be presented by students in the radio and television program. We've got a lot to share over this next half hour. Don't go anywhere. This is Del Mar Now. guest has worked in several school districts in the area and held positions from vocal music instructor to principal to being an adjunct professor. She's an alumni of Del Mar College and receives her Bachelor's of Music at Texas A&M University Kingsville and a Master's of Science Administration from Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. She serves on the Corpus Christi Symphony Orchestra Board and is a recent recipient of the Outstanding Alumni Award from Del Mar College Vikings Alumni <laughs> Association. Please welcome to Del Mar College Board of Regents, Sandra Messbarger. Hi, well thanks for being with us, Sandra. I am humbled to be here. Well, firstly, congratulations Thank on you. that outs Thank outstanding you. Uh, Viking Alumni Award. Uh, tell us how it feels to have that award. Well, I think I was telling uh, Sally the, the other day was that, you know, you see that commercial of this young girl walking down the mall with some packages or something and she gets a telephone call and then all of a sudden she just looks around <laughs> and she looks around and she goes, I got the job, I got the job, I got, you know, that, that's about how I feel. But then at the same time, I, I am humbled for um, whoever it was that brought my name up and certainly the people that voted for me, I, uh, I'm thankful. Well, you know, you, you've, you've played multiple hats at Del Mar College, being a regent, being an, an alumni, you know, so it's, uh, it's I bet it's kind of come full circle, hasn't it now? It, it has. So. It's my time to pay back. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your time at Del Mar College? What was it like? Well, um, it, it was amazing. Um, you know, I came from a small community, uh, and I majored in music, saxophone. And I remember um, standing there very nervously in, in front of the band hall uh, because we were going to go in and audition for what chair you were going to sit in the band. And... As I was sitting, it was almost one o'clock, and there was like four or five women teachers, two brand new, Evelyn McCarty, that uh, was from the Chicago School of Music, and um, and Miss Mayhew, and they had come from up north, and were ex extremely talented. I mean, really talented. And you're just in awe that you're yeah, in, in and here I, with them. You know, and, they, and they're walking by, and I'm going, I want to be just like them. <laughs> so it, it, it was a whole new experience for me. Um, it was getting to do all the things I wanted to do all the time. But at the same time, and I lived in the dorm, and that was different. Mm -hmm. And then, but I would walk over to the other buildings to get my academics. And just absolutely falling in love with my history class and Dr. Pearson, who was scary, hard, and I almost changed my major. Because, really? well, my dad was an attorney, <laughs> and uh, they kept pushing me in that direction. Right. And people would ask me, oh, Sandra, you're going to college next year. What are you going to major in? And mother would say, history. And I'd say, music. <laughs> but music went out. Well, and as I mentioned before, you, you've, you've gone on with multiple degrees after Del Mar College. So do you feel your experiences at Del Mar College prepared you for what was to come for the future in terms of um, academia? Well, after I left Del Mar, I got married and one of us needed to work because <laughs> neither one of us had a degree. Uh -oh. And uh, so I went in the classroom when I was 19 years old and taught at a migrant school. Children that were five years old, 
all the way to 19, <laughs> wow. my age. And I was teaching elementary music. And had anybody asked me just three months before that I would be teaching young children, I would have said absolutely not. <laughs> my dream was going to be a band director, stand in front of a band and direct and conduct. That didn't happen. <laughs> Life happened. <laughs> As it does to many. That's right. So that's when I started uh, teaching when I was 19. And let me tell you, if it had not been what I learned at Del Mar, I mean, with very little knowledge when I came, to what I had after two years, I couldn't have done it. Nor ha would I have had the confidence. Um, like, I had to learn how to sight read because it was very easy for me to play my horn. Mm -hmm. You know, this is C, D, E, a D, whatever. But never did I have to vocalize except in our sight reading class, you know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, and you had to sing the right pitches and change keys and all of those different things, which is, I ended up being a choral director because no one was hiring women band directors when I was out there, 19 years old, to stand in front of a band. I could sit in the practice room and teach my saxophone, oh, but wow. that was not what I wanted. Right. And this accidentally happened to me and changed my major as I was finishing up eight years later. I taught all through the year and went to school during the summer. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like you got your foot in the door in music very early on with, the, with, with being paid, with a, with a job. Can you tell us a little bit about your most exciting moment in your career in music? Well, I was at Cal Allen High School, um, really my first big job. And uh, I had choirs from the sixth grade to the 12th grade. And uh, it was really an exciting thing. It was right after Celia. Okay. And the choir room was a portable building and no air conditioning. And we were surrounded by water, except you could walk in there because they lifted the, the they put a, walk, a little walkway so we could go around the water to get in there. So um, that was exciting. But I think the greatest thing was watching my students go to Washington, D.C. and sing at the house on the floor my uh, godfather from the valley was a congressman at that time and so he arranged for us to be there then we sang for a committee meeting and then we were out in the hallway in front of his office and tip o'neill he was out there and he just i mean they were crying you know and the kids were just you know the more they cried the more they wanted to perform and um he said do you happen to know um danny boy well my girls choir now we're talking 90 kids mm -hmm. My uh, girls choir had performed it for contest about two weeks before we went to D.C. So I gave them the pitch and they started singing. And let me tell you, there was not a dry eye. And bless his heart, <laughs> he, just, he, he just fell apart. So that was really exciting. And um, all our trip at D.C., everything we did was amazing. We had wonderful experiences. And the reason... You know, I, I had administrators and the superintendent asked me, why do you want to take these kids out of here? Why don't you just go to Houston or go to Dallas? And I, and I wanted to tell them, you know, music is not something you can read about, touch. It's something inside of you. Mm -hmm. And um, so I am explaining to them about how to sing this certain piece of music that was written in the 1600s. And of course, you didn't have accompaniment. You had to learn to do it a cappella and what kind of tone they were supposed to make. And I'd, I'd say, make believe you're in a beautiful cathedral and you're, you know, and they're going, okay, you know, where'd we have a cathedral? And they loved singing at, um, at the Catholic church here. We used to do our major programs at, because I wanted to give them that feeling. Right. The choir room just didn't sound that way. And um, I think those were the most exciting times was watching those students, their eyes just go, wow, now we know what you're talking about. <laughs> and they also sang for the first jazz festival in New Orleans in a tent. 
<laughs> well, it sounds like your experiences at Del Mar College have brought you vast experiences since then, and, and we're excited that you're on our Board of Regents, and we thank you for your, for your service for, the, for Del Mar College. Thank you. My pleasure. Students in the Radio and Television Program are up next with a Del Mar Now update. After that, we'll meet the Dean of Student Outreach and Enrollment at Del Mar College. Stay with us. Excuse me. Excuse me, are you Santa Claus? I heard you might be him. If you are him, here's my list. Help the Marines make Christmas possible for less fortunate children. Donate a new toy to Toys for Tots. Here's Santa Claus. Catch the Viking spirit. Nationally recognized and locally focused, Del Mar College has been delivering dreams for over 75 years. If Del Mar College has touched your life, join the Vikings Alumni Association and help others achieve their dreams. Stay connected. Support scholarships. Explore the Viking Career Network. Join online today at delmar.edu slash alumni for as little as $10 and get a free t-shirt. Show your Viking pride. I used to dream. I was finishing my high school diploma so I could earn a college degree and launch my career. Today, I am. Go from I dream to I am. Del Mar College offers GED high school equivalency classes free throughout the coastal bend. Del Mar College, dreams delivered. Welcome to Del Mar Now Update. I'm Lyle Spore. And I'm Nadia Diaz. Spring registration is underway at Del Mar College. Current students and incoming students can sign up for courses leading to a certificate or associate's degree. Online and campus registration will run through December 20th. Online registration will continue through the holiday break and end on Wednesday, January 4th. Students with less than 24 hours of credit must have an advising hold removed before being able to register. January 4th is also the deadline to pay for courses. If the deadline is not met, those not having paid will be withdrawn from the courses. Classes begin January 17th. Individuals with questions may contact the Student Enrollment Center at 698-1290. And additional information is available online at www.delmar.com. Edu. Nearly 150 students recently graduated with a GED certificate. The determination to gain a high school diploma or its equivalent was an inspiration to the students. The students completed Del Mar College's Department of College and Career Adult Education program and a ceremony was held November 3rd in Selena Auditorium with 64 students walking the stage. A Del Mar College Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics Advisor, Leticia Wilson, gave the keynote address. The College and Career Adult Education Program provides developmental education to students ineligible or unprepared for college credit courses. Veterans Day was observed on the campus of Del Mar College by honoring the men and women who served their country. The college's Veteran Center recognizes those students who are veterans with a year-round motto, proudly serving those who served with pride. The director of the Veterans Center, Tammy McAuliffe, says military service members, as well as their families, are vital to Del Mar College's mission. She says Del Mar's mission is to provide access to quality education, workforce preparation, and lifelong learning. Del Mar College has adopted a military community covenant pledging support for students who have served. Nearly 15% of the college's enrollment consists of veterans or dependents of veterans receiving benefits. That translates to about 1,400 students. Scholarships can be life-changing for students. Numerous scholarship winners had an opportunity in mid-November to share stories and thank donors who supported scholarships at Del Mar College. The face-to-face -face activity was the annual scholarship reception hosted by the DMC Foundation. The current academic year saw 215 scholarships awarded. There were 37 students in attendance at the event, and the Development Foundation Office oversees the scholarship awarded. 
Over $1 million have been awarded to these students. To learn more about students, about scholarships, contact the DMC Foundation. Or by going to www.delmar.edu forward slash scholarships. At Del Mar College Board of Regents has been appointed to a state-level committee. Board Chair Trey McCampbell was appointed to the Financial Literary Advisory Committee of the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. The advisory group is to recommend better options for students and their parents to finance successful college careers. The group is in response to the high level of student debt in the United States. It is estimated student debt totals nearly $1.2 trillion. The advisory committee is part of the effort to have 60% of young Texas adults to have higher education credentials by 2030. The effort is titled 60 by 30 TX. McCampbell has been a regent since 2004 and board chair since 2009. The second annual Day of Women Symposium was held earlier this semester on the campus of Del Mar College. The first event took place in March 2015 with former First Lady Laura Bush speaking to guests. Bush spoke about women's health and was also present to raise funds for the Laura Bush Institute for Women's Health with the Texas Tech Health Science Center. This year's event was titled Being Your Own Best Friend, and approximately 200 invited guests were at the event, a three-part presentation centered on emotional, physical, and nutritional health. DMC Foundation Executive Director Mary McQueen says having powerful speakers at the event was rewarding. Speakers at the event included Linda Ross, from the Laura Bush Institute and Dr. Robert Gagel from the MD Anderson Center Cancer Center. That's this edition of Del Mar Now Update. I'm Lyle Spohr. And I'm Nadia Diaz. Stay tuned for more Del Mar Now. Get Del Mar College information right in the palm of your hand using Viking Go. Viking Go is Del Mar College's mobile app full of useful college information you can access on your cell phone or tablet. Choose from 13 active modules from the menu. You can even access Del Mar College social media feeds. Viking Go is available on Google Play and the Apple App Store for your phones and tablets. Stay on the go with Viking Go. Start using Viking Go today. Dream of earning a great salary? With excellent benefits, Del Mar College can get you where you want to go. Drivers are in huge demand. And with our transportation training services, you can earn a commercial driver's license in as little as three weeks. So drive your own success and get the license that puts you behind the wheel. Learn more at delmar.edu slash trucking. City. Marines have delivered Christmas to children in need since 1947. For more information about Del Mar Now, log on to www.delmar.edu slash now. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions to help us improve Del Mar Now, send an email to now at delmar.edu. Our next guest is the new Dean of Student Outreach and Enrollment at Del Mar College. Prior to that, she was the college's director of early college programs. She earned her bachelor's degree from George Mason University and a master's degree from Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. Please welcome back to Del Mar now, Patricia Benavides Dominguez. Hi. Hi, well thank you for being with us today. No so the fall semester is wrapping up pretty quickly and I'm sure your offices are busy. Can you tell us a little bit about the steps that someone would need to do in order to attend for the spring semester? 
Well, between um, the fall started and, and now, <clears throat> we have been conducting a variety of DREAMS uh, delivered workshops and where students can come to the Student Enrollment Center on the East or West and get one-on-one uh, -on -one assistance with any aspect of their Applied Texas or their financial aid or any kind of paperwork issues that they may have that would prevent them from enrolling. We've had um, registration going on since early November and um, so that will continue up until August, until December 20th when we leave. Okay. And our offices will be open business as usual <clears throat> and we will assist students in person, over the phone, you know, if they email us, we respond to them. So we will be doing that. Um, and then um, the payment deadline for the spring registration is uh, January 4th when we get back from vac Christmas break. Okay. And, you know, and a lot of students aren't also aware of that there's not write one big check on January 4th. So there's sure. a lot of different ways that that I know the college tries to help to help students out with you're, tuition and, and enrollment as well too. So You're absolutely correct. The payment um, installment plan has been open and we do assist students with uh, finalizing that as well as the cashier's office, the financial aid office. We do all kind of uh, tag team any students that we see uh, around the computers uh, near the the computer uh, the cashier station, mm -hmm. uh, also downstairs, and uh, if we go to the east or west campus to the Coleman Center or to the the Student Roman Center and the Harvin Center, uh, we do help students with uh, making sure that they have um, secured their either installment plan, taking care of any financial aid, um, last minute paperwork that they have to do in order for awards to occur. And uh, that, that'll be uh, up until January 4th, I believe, at 6.30. Okay, okay. Um, well, with registration happening, uh, a lot of people come in, you know, maybe closer to the beginning of January because they decide, oh, I think I can go to school now. <laughs> maybe I've got the money now, or now I've got availability in my schedule to go. What changes are there with respect to registration or tuition payment? I know a while back ago there was the meningitis shot. Are there any right. new changes happening for this spring semester? Yes, there is. Uh, we are uh, pushing uh, enrollment uh, for uh, spring registration a week ahead of time. So that means when we get back on January 4th, that'll okay. be the first payment deadline uh, for you know students that have been uh, enrolling since November. And uh, there will be a drop for, for, for those students that have not paid. And then on Saturday, uh, January the 7th, and the following week thereafter, particularly um, Tuesday the 10th and Wednesday the 11th, we will have late registration going on. Saturday will be from 10 to 2, and on uh, Tuesday it'll be from 7.30 to 8, and Wednesday it'll be 7.30 to, I think, 6.30. Okay. And so, but any time during that time, also Monday, Thursday, Friday of that same week of the week of when we return, uh, of the, I believe it's the, the ninth, the Student Enrollment Center on the East and West Campus will be seeing students. Uh, normal business hours will be open till 6.30 on Friday the 13th till five o'clock. Uh, all other departments on East and West Campus are by appointment only because there may be other meetings going on if students have to go see their advisor. Mm -hmm. uh, so I encourage students to, if they're a particular major, welding, nursing, uh, biology to please contact their respective department. Uh, the Student Enrollment Center will always be standby as overflow uh, okay. and we will we will address any student and help assist any student in any manner that we need to. Okay, so when do classes begin? Mm, classes begin on Tuesday, January 17th. All right, so, so the Saturday registration, we traditionally used to have it the Saturday right before classes right. would begin, so that's no longer happening. No longer. MLK weekend, we will not have registration. No one will be on campus. So people need to get in there early. Exactly. <laughs> the only mechanism that will be open during the MLK weekend will be students can log into their web DMC to drop classes, not to add. Okay. So there'll only be a drop process so that students can be assured that they could get 100% refund because as you know, the first day of class, you're already at a 75% refund reducing. rate. Reducing, correct. Right. So uh, sometimes students find that hard to believe if, you know, but I haven't even attended my class. How can I be at a 75% refund rate? But that is our policy. 
And um, so, and that's in line with all institutions pretty much in the state of Texas. Okay. As you mentioned, uh, January 4th as a tuition payment <coughs> deadline, is that the last, last deadline mm -hmm. or is that just the deadline for early registration? That's the deadline, good question. That's the deadline for early registration. And then after that, the second deadline to pay if you, if late. you, if the late registration, uh -huh. let's say if you came to register on Saturday, January 7th, then uh, Friday, January 13th by five o'clock is the payment deadline. Okay. Okay. G good, good days to know about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, you're with the Student Enrollment Center and the Registrar's Office. Tell us about the services that are offered, the student services that someone may not know about. Well, we go out to the high schools and recruit there, of course. We also do a lot of non-traditional uh, recruitment. We go to a lot of different events throughout uh, the community, in the community on nights, weekends. So we're trying to recruit any student, not just the the impending, you know, graduate mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. from a high school within our area, and uh, we, like I said, we've had a lot of dreams delivered workshops in our area to try to get students to come back in. We have been also reaching out, uh, in our, particularly with within our division, uh, because as you know, we see all the liberal arts majors. So we have uh, been reaching out to students that are, have maybe completed 75% of their program of study, but still have not attained graduation. Okay. So we are doing an outreach to those students via email and by personal letter uh, to see if they can come back in. How can we help them? Right, you know, get those completers. Get those completers. And, uh, and so we're doing that effort. We're also working with Title V. They have a program with, uh, with a grant that they call Graduation Coaches. And what they're doing is that they're looking at all the prospective graduates that have only completed 75% of their program study throughout all the whole campus, mm -hmm. any major. And so we are working with them in uh, getting them to come in to complete their program of study so important regardless. to have that degree just to finish it up. Yes, yes, <laughs> so very important. That's, that's an important strategy that you guys are working on. Right, right. Um, well, where can someone get more information about mm -hmm. enrollment or Del Mar College? Um, www.delmar.edu, right at the top of the page. Before Thanksgiving, we pushed out a postcard promoting uh, registration. Now, January, uh, December 20th, a postcard will go out to the top 25 zip codes uh, in our area, uh, and they will, will be promoting registration on the 7th, the 10th, the 11th, when the, ma the majority of the advisors will be on campus. On campus. Mm -hmm. If someone is listening for the first time has never attended Del Mar College, what's the best way to enroll into Del Mar College, do you think? ApplyTexas.org. All right, well, we appreciate all your hard work on this. No problem, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments about Del Mar Now, send an email to now at delmar.edu. We will return with a brand new show in January. Until then, we'd like to wish you and yours a very safe and happy holiday season. I'm Amy Mintz for Delmar Now. Thanks for watching.